we could do all kinds of testing, but we usually always miss something in, in plain testing. What does actual formal verification bring you that that you might miss in testing? So um, let, let's look at something simple, right? You have a function that to integer. How many tests do you need to do to exhaustively test that function? It's it's a very, very large number. That's so large that you can't test that practically. Uh, so in testing, you have all kinds of methodologies that uh, will allow you to decide, OK, now I've tested enough. Uh, we have structural code coverage, for example. But if you look at structural code coverage, it's an incredibly weak argument if you start to have somewhat complex functions because you know you, you could go to this path, to that path, to this path, and, and, and coverage will tell you nothing uh, of the fact that all the possible combinations uh, are, are, are actually correct and, and have been tested. Uh, and even in a se pure sequential code, you can have values that are problematic and, and cut coverage will test nothing about the fact that you've tested enough value. And you have ways to mitigate that to some extent, which things such as boundary value analysis or maybe uh, you fuzzing and so on and so forth. But, but still, uh, you will fall short of fully uh, evaluating all the cases. And in 99.99999% of the cases, that might be enough. What Spark would tell you, because it's doing a formal analysis, because it's doing mathematical demonstration of the properties of your code, it will tell you that in 100% of the cases, the source code is correct with regard to a specification. So it's, it's, a, it's an incredibly stronger uh, argument. Now, in safety, you may or may not want to reach that 100% certainty, because safety is all about odds of failure, right? So maybe the 99999999% is enough. Maybe it's too expensive to get there. Maybe you want formal proof because you feel like writing all this as expensive and writing proof is less expensive, but that's a different trade-off, right? If you go now to the world of security, you want 100% because you're going to have people that are actively looking at exploiting the one mistake that you left in 10 million lines of code. So for, for, for cyber security, I would say the argument is somewhat stronger for formal proof than it even is for safety. Yeah, and like you mentioned, the number of permutations goes up exponentially depending yes. on the complexity of the code. Yes. And if I can segue to humans testing and verifying, how about AI? Has that made a big stride in being able to uh, take a good look at your code and identify if there's any problems? Uh, I think it's making progress. I, I don't have actual stories to share, uh, but you know, intuitively, of course, AI will find its way into this world of static analyzers, so in, in the world of tools that are going to be able to identify uh, bugs for you. And I think that there is a, a lot of potential in not replacing what we have today with AI, but augmenting it. Right? Okay, I've got the static analysis tool that look at certain bugs. AI will look at others. Maybe AI can explain them better offer fixes and so on and so forth. But with AI, with AI, you will never get this guarantee of absence of defects.